Hey guys, so today I want to talk about body protectors for horses. Um, I'm wearing my, my <laughs> I, I'm wearing my motorcycle racing suit and I wanted to do this because I'm, I'm researching body protectors um, for horseback riding but um, there's a lot of factors and all that stuff and and I wanted to put on my my suits to to remember what what kind of protection it, it gave me and all that so that I could base my decision uh, for the equine body protector off of what I already know with the motorcycle uh, body protectors. Um, so a little bit of background, I used to race motorcycles just a little bit, just a little bit of club racing and stuff, but I've had a lot of crashes and and throughout all my crashes I've had multiple broken bones, I've, you know, I've, I've injured just about everything and and I'm actually very, very handicapped, um, but I work through it and, you know, a, a, a lot of uh, my muscles, whoa, 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 hey. Sorry about that, he was gonna take out the camera. <laughs> so a, a lot of my muscles uh, basically have to um, remold itself and, and do everything in order to compensate for what I'm lacking in tendons, ligaments, uh, whatever. Um, so throughout all of my crashing history, uh, motorcycle and uh, equestrian, I've never broken my back. And um, there's a reason, and it's because in motorcycling I always uh, wore a race suit or full leathers. The, this is called full leathers. These um, I have two of them, and that one <clears throat> was the one, the first one I got, and that was more for street riding. When I got into racing, a one I had a theme for racing, and it was these stripes. My bike was painted the same to match as my leathers, and that was kind of my little theme thing. And um, also, uh, I wanted more protection for race because we're obviously going at higher speeds. Uh, so, so that's why I had the, the, the two suits made. Uh, these suits are, uh, I believe, th well, they're from uh, Custom Z Leathers. Awesome people, like, custom make it. So you go in there, they get you all measured out, and then they make it, and then you get to choose all of your options and, and all that. So th they're, they're awesome. Um, it, and, <laughs> sorry, I still have my concussion. It's only been five days since my, my crash on the, the horse crash and I still have my concussion and he's like totally distracting me. But um, he never does this yawning thing. It's, it's just now he's trying to get my attention. So so anyways, um, I have the two suits. Uh, they're custom made. They're, I believe they were $1,400 each. But sir, stop it. He's like totally trying to knock over the camera right now. I think that's, that's his, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 stop, no. No, don't take out the camera. You 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 need to go. Go 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 go. Go go go. I guess he decided that um, if, if he can't get my attention, he's just gonna take out the camera. He's really smart. Anyways, um, I think they were about fourteen hundred dollars each, um, somewhere around there. So, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't. I, I'm very careful with my money and I hate spending money and stuff, but this is this is my body, this is my life that we're talking about, and I can't put a price on it, and I can't ignore the fact that I've never had a spinal injury before, and now I did, and it was because I was on horseback, and I don't, I've never worn body protection on horseback. One, because I'm a damn good rider. <laughs> no, and, and it, I, I guess, I guess, you know, I've been really, really lucky because, um, I don't do easy riding. I do extreme riding. You've seen my videos and stuff. He's very, very extreme and stuff. But we got a bond and we have understanding and 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 all that. Um, this this crash on horseback. It wasn't my horse. Um, I wasn't in control. I was a passenger on the back, and uh, so yeah, I, I had I had nothing protecting me. And on top of that, I didn't have a plan B for my body. Uh, for my head, yeah, I had my helmet on. That that was. That, you know, the helmet is the last resort uh, protection, right? And when motorcycling, I have full leathers, including my full gauntlet gloves that I didn't put on. But you can imagine, they're full gauntlet gloves. They come out to, he they come out to here. You know, they're, they're armored and everything. Uh, my boots are full 
they have the reinforcements on the boots to um it's like full i am like fully armored when i when i ride motorcycles and always if i'm on the street i ride with that one racing then i ride with this one um but on horseback i didn't and e even in my helmet safety video um you know you'll see that even about the helmet i was kind of like eh, the only time i really kind of needed the helmet was this one little um there's this one little uh, get off on the on the horse and it wasn't my horse again it wasn't lacerre and the horse stepped on my head and so you know yeah so i gave the helmet credit then but really uh an equestrian helmet has never saved my life until saturday five days ago that helmet absolutely saved my life and i am very very grateful and i have renewed respect for the helmet and all that um I mean, even on top of everything I know, and, and the thing is, I was talking about motorcycle helmets, right? And those have already been proven to me that um, they're awesome. But you look at how big the motorcycle helmet is, and then you look at the itty bitty equestrian helmet, and you're like, ah, eh, you know, what's that gonna do? Well, <laughs> it did enough. It saved my life, so, so I'm very grateful. But now, the question was, okay, this time my injuries um, were all upper body. I got uh, spiked into the, the fence, big metal bars. The bars went and, okay, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna be able to move much in, in this suit because this suit is actually quite restrictive. Um, I can't lift my arms any more than there and I can't lift, um, move any more back. This suit is basically uh, top protection and all I can do is ride my motorcycle, get into this position that that's all it'll allow me to do. But um, that makes it so that it, you know, I can't twist and turn and, and get any other injuries. So I will be taking this off so I can show you some stuff. But for, um, for uh, this, this crash, this, um, this horseback riding crash, my injuries were, I broke, um, have complete fractures of the transverse, left transverse processes of uh, L3 and L4, lumbar three and four. Um, that's the little wings on the spine. And also my, uh, my concussion and smashed my whole uh whole left side of my body my right arm i can't even show you this but there's pictures online my this whole thing is all bruised up this elbow is all bruised up here and and smashed up and road rashed there so um somehow i hit and i was rotating so i i when i came off i was actually rotating so i hit here came around hit this whole side the bar got me right there um, and broke the, uh, broke the transverse processes on this side right here. Uh, my kidneys got smashed up. I was peeing blood. All across this arm, I have extreme weakness. Um, I, I really can't lift uh, much more than this. I can if I really think about it and focus and make myself and have pain. Um, in the process, I can lift it higher. So I know that the muscle is technically working, but um, I wonder if it's actually um, uh, because of my, sp it could, well, it could be because of the blunt force trauma. There was, it was a huge hit. So blunt force trauma, that is, um, just hurts the, this whole muscle and stuff. Also across my shoulders on across the whole thing and my neck, I had, uh, uh, probably like whiplash type injury all across all my neck muscles all across my shoulders all the way down my spine because um, I hit up here as well as down here and there's um, a lot of instability in my spine now whenever I, I move everything's clicking and popping and and stuff like that um, and then all the way down all the way down my leg um, I was actually having shooting pains down in my ankle um, w without even moving it. And then my, my thigh and all along my calf. So this the whole side is just all beat up, but it's blunt force trauma. But the break, um, you know, broke my spine. And that's uh, back here, my shoulders. So what I'll show you on the motorcycle one, this there's a huge back protector in here 
and this one I can't actually take out which I was looking at that right now and um, I really wanted to take it out and show you guys but um, this is a very very thick back protector and it does not it does not really bend much at all um, and there's back here you can see all the scrapes and stuff where I've slid on my back and I've had impact on my back and everything and it protected me here there's the my uh, this is my arm so this is my elbow this is the elbow armor in here so this armor is very stiff and it goes from here to here and you can see all the scrapes on that here's my shoulder um, and there's a huge chunk of armor in here as well and there's cuts in there that slice and also um, and then here is the other side and the armor and then the leather is all cut up uh, in there okay so I have crashed in this uh, several times and and basically what happens is um, I had martial arts training in the past and I totally recommend that everyone learn how to fall uh, that's the biggest thing the problem is that in a motorcycle crash if you're lucky and you you uh, you crash on the track or something or you know wide open grounds if you're lucky you will slide and just slide and dissipate all of that energy um, and then just you know get up when you're done <laughs> Um, if you're not lucky, the worst, worst thing that can happen is a lot of speed and force into a solid object um, because then it's your body absorbing all of that, all of that shock and that's when bones break and um, uh, soft tissue, organs rupture and, and stuff like that because your body is not meant to take a lot of um, impact, right? So that's where all of the armor comes in. And also, just the fact that, you know, I've got thick leather over everything. The leather also, it's one piece and it spreads out that, that force. So when there's a big impact, the leather spreads everything out. The, the foam back protector, you know, that absorbs and spreads out that force. And then the leftover stuff is what my body has to has to take which is why I've always been able to come away from it relatively unscathed um, now this one is my street one and it's the same thing I have the protectors on the elbow the shoulder and the back but this one I think I can take out I'm going to go ahead and take this one out. Now, the other thing, oh, I was talking about the martial arts thing and learning how to learning how to crash. So one of the things about learning how to crash is um, when, when I crash, I always tuck and roll. So I always fight until the very last minute. And then when I, when I get to that point where I'm like, okay, all is lost, then I tuck. And, um, and I completely relax my body. You know how drunk people hardly ever get hurt? It's because they're so relaxed. Um, if you brace and stiffen yourself, you'll get hurt a lot more than if you just relax. So you have to tuck. Um, I always hit with my left shoulder, which is, uh, may have played a part in why I, I ended up rotating around. Um, part of it, big part is how the, th how the horse threw me and the momentum of everything. But basically, I always tuck and roll. So my, my instinctual is to tuck. That's why I hit here, tucked over and rolled over. But I always hit my shoulder. Um, so my shoulder is so beat up from all of this. And that's why shoulder protection is really important. I'm explaining all this and, and you'll see why later. But this is the, um, this is the foam in my in my street suit and it's not very impressive but you can see it is reinforced on the on the spine and then it has these foam panels that are more um, flexible that wrap around but you see this part <laughs> this part that wraps around 
You see where my injury was this time? Right in this area. And this is the part that, that wraps around here. So in motorcycling, this little flap that protects your flank, that's your flank area, is uh, very important. And they, they already know that. Um, in equestrian body armor, uh, it's harder to find ones with, with this protection. And that is definitely something that I want. I know how I fall. I fall, I hit my shoulder. I want something with shoulder protection. Um, I know that my flank is extremely delicate <laughs> and uh, I want flank protection. And definitely I need spine protection. So you see how this isn't that impressive. It's very bendy and stuff, but it is one piece. And even though this side, you know, you can't really tell that well, I think this side you can see a little bit better. You can actually see the reinforced panel over here and then the second reinforced over um, each of the spine uh, area um, where the body of the, of the vertebra is, okay? Now, I wish I could take it out of the, the race suit um, to show you that one, but I, I can't. And it's probably a safety feature that that, is, that one is completely sewn in but this one is a lot stiffer and I can feel the extra bumps in here. This, the, the, the back protector that is in my race suit is, is like, was, well, top of the line at that time um, and everything. So, all right, so getting back to equine body protectors. Um, there are ones, uh, they're, they're called action shirts, where you can buy and it's actually a shirt with armor sewn into it. So you can have full, full torso protection. Um, uh, not very common, I don't think you ever see people wear those at all. Then you see cross country and eventers. They're, they uh, have a lot of crashes and so they, they definitely have a lot of um, <clears throat> body armor type uh, and they wear the body arm the body protector now there's uh, two main kinds there's the inflatable ones and then there's the the ones that is armor okay um, really the inflatable ones they have their weakness and and um, of the two main brands two point or point two and hit air um, I would uh, the design of the point two is a lot better in my opinion and I would recommend that one um, and I can point you to to the data of why I came to that decision if you want but w one, one of the things that I'm looking for is how many individual panels there are um, the reason why an egg is so strong to crushing forces is because it it's it's an oval so when you, you know, when you put force all around, it spreads the force all around. It's smooth, it's one piece all the way around. Um, one piece is going to be stronger, better than many small pieces. Um, and every individual piece, everywhere where you have a hinge, a hinge, an elbow, that's a weak spot. Uh, so when you're looking at design, you want to look at that. Then you want to look at if there's um, shoulder and clavicle protection. A lot of uh, equine injuries will break the clavicle. That's very common. And also shoulder, if you're someone like me that, you know, hits. When, when I fall, I need to have a landing spot. So what's a good landing spot? My head, my abdomen, my back, uh, my hips, you know, um, my hip is so close to my flank, right? Uh, the really only safe spot away from any major uh, organs and stuff is, is my shoulder. And so th that's where I always land and that's where I want protection. Um, my flank, oh my gosh, I have never felt so soft as a moment that my body impacted that, that metal, the big metal bars of the fence. My, I felt my body crush into it. I felt my bones snap. Um, and I felt the bars be completely ungiving hard and it was horrible. And I, every time I falter about getting body armor um, now, I just have to remember that moment. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I, I want something between me and that. Um, 
So let's talk about the moment of the crash. Um, I never black out. I'm not the type that blacks out ever in any of my crashes. Um, this time was probably one of the closest times I did because the amount of force. Um, I usually don't have so much, you know, so much impact like that. The, the one that I had the most impact like that was my race crash where I had um, the 15 broken bones, crushed everything and all that. And that was high speed impact into the pit wall. Um, this, the, the problem with horseback riding injuries that's different from motorcycling is, like I was saying, motorcycling you want to slide, right? In horseback, you're not quite going the speeds of motorcycling. Top speed is probably 50 miles an hour. Um, but the horse can slam you with the force of a ton. Um, and so it's a lot of impact. Plus, like the eventers and stuff, if you happen to go up and over your horse's head and neck and you land on the ground and then the horse tumbles on over you, um, they can crush you. So that is the weight of a horse on top of you and falling on top of you. So with him, that's 1,300 pounds plus tack. Um, that is, so it's probably closer to 1,400 pounds that is crushing me. So I'm taking that into consideration. Not only if it's just because I'm tumbling over, but also if he steps into a ditch wrong or something and we, you know, he low sides or something falls on his side or he falls down and he's struggling and his legs are kicking. Um, if the, his legs kick me or, you know, any of those scenarios, the problem with the horse crash is you got the horse involved and you got all of his muscle and mass and fear and all that. Um, and then there's usually fences around. There's, you know, if you're riding in the city, there's, you know, light posts and bars and, if you're riding in the country, there's huge boulders and rocks, and there's just a lot of stuff to impact. You usually don't slide because you don't have the, the momentum to slide, but you get slammed. And this time I got slammed, and this is probably the first time I got slammed without any kind of protection on, um, bo body, body protection on, and it, it was not good. So the moment of the crash, um, I didn't know that we were in that serious of a trouble until we finished. We crossed the finish line. The few feet between when we crossed the finish line and we should be slowing down and stopping and we only accelerated into the fence. And that is a very, very short distance to be able to plan or, or anything. And all the eyewitnesses said that he accelerated into the fence. And he smashed it so hard the fence actually bent out. You can see that in the video. Um, and he collapsed as well, um, the, the horse. And remember, it wasn't Lasserre. <laughs> Lasserre keeps telling me that too. He tells me, yeah, that wasn't me. That's what you get for riding another horse, mom. But anyways, um, so the moment of the crash, you know, I realized that I was going down. I tucked. Um, I, I tucked and prepared to roll. The reason why you want to roll is to just try to spread out the injury as well. You, you want to roll. You want to dissipate that energy. You don't want sudden stops. Sudden stops is the most horrible. So you want to get the momentum going. You want to roll. In, in this case, I hit here and I hit across here. So this took a lot of, of force, but at least that kind of spread out from what all of this had to take as well. And um, so I, I, let's see. I realized that's no good, you know, I tucked, I relaxed, went limp. I just went limp, my body, and, and I threw my body to roll. I rolled and then my, um, I never lose conscious, but what happens is my, my consciousness sucks into myself. I, it's almost like after having all of these crashes and experiences, I have a little safe, I have a little safe house inside my head. and. I withdrew into that safe spot and then every impact that I felt and every pain that I felt made me withdraw further and further into, into my little safe house. And I was aware the whole time, but I just withdrew in there into this little seed of safeness. And then, um, and then I felt, um, I, no, I didn't feel anything. 
I heard people's voices from far away and then coming closer and closer. And I don't know if my eyes were closed or what, but I felt like my eyes were closed. I, I wasn't seeing everything. Everything was inside my head. So um, I heard voices coming louder and louder. I heard people yelling, don't move, don't move, don't move. And then, um, and so I didn't move. I, I just stayed still and I stayed limp. And then I started making, um, making a mental assessment, uh, checking out my whole body, scanning my whole body, trying to see, you know, what was damaged. And immediately I, I told people, my kidney, my kidney. Um, so in that moment, I felt the impact. Um, and, and the biggest thought that I came away from it all was my body has never felt so little and so soft as when we hit. So after all of that, let's talk about body protectors. All right, I have my notes here because my brain is fuzzy. Um, there's inflatable kinds and I like the point too. Uh, I don't like the hit air. The hit air has hinges that are weak spots. They had a design that was actually very dangerous and they don't have a, a release valve. Um, you know, a lot of people use the hit air. It's a lot cheaper, but the point two, I believe is a better design. It has one single or, or larger single panels, especially for the spine uh, versus the hit air that has multiple panels, okay? Also, um, point two did do something in the past where a AERC endurance members uh, got a discount if they wanted a point two inflatable vest. So um, if you're a member, go ahead and contact the company and see if um, they still offer something like that. Um, now, the problem with inflatables is you have to be separated from your horse in order for it to to um, go off. A lot of a lot of crashes do happen with you never getting separated from your horse. Uh, so um, that is a huge weakness. If that does not inflate, or there's any kind of problems or reasons why it didn't inflate, you are basically having nothing. Okay. So a lot of the eventers, it is a requirement that they have a body protector on uh, underneath the hit air or the inflatable vest. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about the, the, the body protectors. These are the ones, the armor. The ones that I like, uh, I've broken it down to the AeroWare Outline, the Race Safe ProVent 3.0, the Charles Owen Contact 5, um, the Tipperary, but the ones that are certified, uh, th that's their more expensive models that are certified because most of them are not certified. And the Can Cantech, I'm not sure how you say that, the Cant EQ or the Cantech, something like that. Um, the problem with the Cantech is that I think they're in England or something and I can't find um, any information of them selling here in the US. But that one is the design that I like the best, looking at a design standpoint. Um, it is single, big, solid, single pieces of foam uh, that protect you, and it, it's basically like a turtle shell. When, when you see it, it doesn't collapse. It actually stands alone um, on its own, and it's made so it cannot collapse in, so it'll protect, it'll protect you. It's like being inside a turtle shell that is custom molded to your body they'll get all your measurements and they even mold for your lady curves and everything um, so oh and the foam that they use is also like state-of-the-art it's from Knox technologies that's also used in motor sports uh, for motor safety uh, and and all that and it seems like the best one um, they have really great protection so the the next one that I like seems to be let's see the Charles Owen contact five and I like that because the design is where the flat there's actually flaps that come up and strap here and protect the flank area um, oh back up the Cantec also is, is one of the few few if not the only one that has shoulder protection 
and uh, clavicle protection, so that as well. But the Cont 5, uh, Contact 5 by Charles Owen has a nice big flank protector around here, and it's also more of the solid piece. Um, also, the Arrowware outline is also a solid piece, and it has a lot of protection, so I like that one as well. Then there's the Race Safe Provent that uh, a lot of people like and recommend. It looks great, but it's one of those that has individual foam panels. And, um, but th this one, the design seems to be better than other uh, individual panels. So I like that. The great thing about the in individual panels is that it'll mold to your body better, uh, should be more comfortable. That one is also claimed to be super lightweight and breathable and stuff like that. Things with single panels are not gonna be as breathable, um, but they also don't have a lot of weak points. Every time I see a hinge or a joint or something like that, that's a weak point. Um, so you, you have to decide. Then the Tipperaries, um, they, you see them everywhere. They are probably the most common, the most liked uh, ones, but they actually weren't certified for a long time. And then finally they have like one or two models that are now certified. And um, so they had to make different cha the changes to that. But uh, originally one of the reasons why they weren't certified is they had laces back here. So it was, it was a back protector and then the front and then the lacing on, on the sides here. Um, so they had to change that to get it certified plus other things. The, the foam is now thicker, denser and, and all that stuff. Um, so definitely the ones that are certified uh, look great. And um, a key thing you got, have to make sure is that the, the back protector comes, you want it as long as possible to protect your tailbone and your coccyx, but you, you can't have it that long that it's going to keep, keep hitting the cantle of your saddle um, or interfering that way. Also, if it hits your saddle, it's gonna push the whole thing up and then when you're going over a jump or something like this, you know, if your head is up or whatever, you don't want your helmet hitting the back of the back protector. You see what I'm saying? So it has to be, you know, just right. So um, it, the, the things that you want to look for, you want to see that it's, it has certifications for safety. Um, you want to see that it doesn't restrict your breathing. The great thing about the Cantec is that it's custom molded to you and it doesn't collapse. And so it doesn't interfere with your breathing and it's custom molded. All the other ones were, um, it's more like bendable and stuff like that. Um, the, if you have to, if it only works well because you have to tighten it so much, you might be tightening it too much and then it's harder to breathe okay but you need to do that in order to, for it to do its job so that um if it's light how breathable how hot it is uh if it's comfortable if it's not if it's not comfortable and you're not going to use it then it's not going to do any good sitting in your tack room right um whether or not the company offers a custom fit feature Fit is number one priority, and so custom fit is going to be ideal. Um, that's why I have custom leathers. Also because a lot of off-the-rack leathers are for guys, you know? So, but anyways, custom fit is, is a very important. Tipperary offers custom fit. Um, Cant EQ offers custom fit. I believe a lot of the other ones do offer custom fit um, because it is known that it, the fit has to be right. Um, if it has shoulder clavicle protection and the flank protection, and I already went over why that's important. Um, if it's solid pieces versus panel pieces because of the hinges, and if, the, if things are held together by laces, Velcro, zipper, and the quality of all of these hinges. These are all hinges, so they're all possible weak points. If it's a zipper, does it have a backup for the zipper? Sometimes there's a zipper, and then there's also Velcro over the zipper to protect the zipper from failing, you know, stuff like that. Um, so the big question, I guess, after the crash was, uh, am I now going to look into body protectors? And the first time I was asked that, I said, yeah, that'd be the smart thing to do, but I really don't want to. Um, you know, it's like, I, I don't want to have to wear all this stuff. I just want to ride. But on the other hand, 
I'm in so much pain and I am now even more handicapped than I was before. I have a three-year-old daughter. Um, I want to keep going on and now I have um, the broken spine that will not heal. It will always be broken. Those two pieces cannot be joined. Those will always be broken, which means that I will now always have instability in my back. I use my back for everything, um, so I'm not happy about that. And I may have to be in a, some kind of a back brace to be able to do the things that I usually do. And the biggest thing, too, is I don't think my back can take any more hits. Uh, my back is now instable, and it, you know, it can't take more hits. Um, so... I, I need the protection and so I'm, I'm going to have to do it. Um, all of the equine body protectors, none of them are as much as my, my race suits for motorcycling. So, um, you know, when people are saying, oh, it's so bulky, it's so hot, it's so this and that. I wore my suits and I rode my motorcycles. Um, all the time, you know, every day of the year, no matter if it was hot or whatever. And I dealt with the heat and I dealt with the stiffness and the uncomfortable and what a pain it is to put it on and take it off and all that. I dealt with all of that because of the protection it, it, it gave me. And, um, and the equine body protectors are nowhere near the, the, the bulk and protection of this. Um, and so I'm going to be able to get the bulkiest, thick, thickest and stuff. Although I aim not to, but I'm just saying, you know, people that complain that it's hot and stuff like that, well, depends on what you're used to. And this is why I want to show you what I'm used to. I'm used to full blown protection and, and that's that's going to be my number one priority is, is what's going to give me the most amount of protection. Um, so there you go. Those are my thoughts. And, um, a lot of these are, they're hard to get. There are no stores near me that where I can try them all out and see which one I like and make sure that they fit right. So that's a big bummer to me. Um, so I, I have to, it's going to be a bit of a process to be able to, um, to get the one that I think is going to be the, the best one for me. So there you go. Uh, be safe, everybody. And I hope this is helpful. Let me know if there's any questions. And um, I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.